Good morning. Off to New Hampshire we go. We are going to climb two mountains in the Granite State. First, Mount Washington, by car and by rail. Then we're gonna hike to the summit of Mount Manadnock on foot. We'll be chasing waterfalls in the Castle in the Clouds conservation area. We'll stop by Concord, the state capital, Manchester and the seacoast. I'm free in my RV We've actually set foot in New Hampshire once before, but it was for less than an hour on those odd 17 miles on the I-95 corridor. We did stop to take advantage of their tax-free wine and liquor, but that was it. This time, however, we intend to spend a few days and see some of the things the state has to offer. Our tenure here will not be without challenges. You see, it is Sunday, October 10. Columbus Day weekend and the camping season ends tomorrow, so it will be increasingly difficult to find places to stay. Today we're covered. We're staying at Mount Washington Cog Railway, which is a harvest host. Tomorrow, we'll see. Only 2.6 miles from the state line. And we are now officially in New Hampshire for the first time. We're about to earn that sticker on our map and we're going to begin with perhaps the most quintessential thing to do in this state. And that is going to the top of Mount Washington, famous for being home of the world's worst weather. I see some clouds on the mountains, but Mount Washington seems to be clear. I think it's going to be our lucky day. Is that the Cog Railway? Isn't that something? That must be the steam locomotive chugging along the steep mountainside. Either that or a forest fire. There it goes. Yep, that's the steam locomotive. Well, here we are at Mount Washington, probably the most off-level we've ever parked. <laughs> But look at that view. We're gonna take the, the cog train tomorrow. Well, we made it to the base of Mount Washington and uh, we have tickets actually to go tomorrow, first thing in the morning, up in the cog railway. But we also happen to be here. We were able to drop the trailer here. This is a harvest host. So what we're gonna do we're gonna take the road, the motor road, up to Mount Washington right now.
Yeah. Take the next right onto Base Station Road. This is bucket list. <laughs> Oh, hold on. I think I forgot to lock the door. Let's go back and check, just to be sure. Don't you hate it when you don't remember? Yeah, I had forgotten to lock the storage compartment. Okay, we're good. Narrow winding road the next 9 miles. Should be fun, and this is the thing. The auto road is all the way on the other side of the mountain, so it is almost an hour drive just to get there. They were not kidding when they said narrow and winding, and I wonder if you can boondock along this road. That would be a sweet spot. I mean, all this seems to be forest service land, so I don't see why not. Just pack it in, pack it out, leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but memories, as they say. Maybe one of these days, if we're traveling lighter, we'll be able to stay at one of those pullouts. One thing is for sure, it is pretty remote. No cell phone signal to speak of along this road, but it is a beautiful drive. It almost doesn't look real now, does it? And we're back on US 2. Here we are, Gorham. Gorgeous little town. Maybe we'll stop back for dinner later on the way back. And here we are. This is where we're going to take the Mount Washington Auto Road. They do offer tours if you don't feel up to the task, but I'm confident both Denver, the Colorado and I are up to it. Very organized, the way they route traffic and, by the way, absolutely no RVs of any kind. Not allowed. Not even camper vans. And uh, going up to the mountain isn't cheap. There's a $45 toll for car and driver plus $20 extra for each passenger. So this will be a whooping $65. Yep, yeah, ouch. Go up and drive and come down in your first gear. Save your brakes. A safe trip. This is the view from more or less the halfway point. From here it should get a little more exciting. We are now in that mile long segment that is a dirt road and a little bit of a white knuckle drive with all this traffic coming downhill. Now above the tree line and into the clouds for a little bit. Now at 5,000 feet, we're getting close to the top. Yep. 
Yep, commanding view, if I may say so myself. Check out the Cog Railway arriving right next to us. Well, we've made it to the top of Mount Washington, tallest peak east of the Mississippi here and Today we're getting unprecedented good weather. Weather up here apparently is usually really bad, but today look at this. We have the sun shining and we are above a sea of clouds. That's amazing. Let's go all the way to the top, right up there. And uh, very excited to be here. By the way, I must correct myself. It is not the tallest peak east of the Mississippi. That would be Mount Mitchell's in North Carolina. This is just under 200 feet lower, but it is the tallest peak in the Northeast for sure. Here's the cog train about to depart on its way back down the mountain. Tomorrow we'll be making the trek in one of those, which is gonna be equally as exciting as driving the outer road, I'm sure. Now that's old technology that still works, so why change it, right? Aside from the addition of diesel locomotives, this is pretty much the way it was in 1868. Well, it looks like we got here right in the, at the perfect time because we have some, some clouds coming from that way and uh, I think all the views are going to be gone here in a few seconds, in a matter of seconds, look at that. All the views are gone. It's all clouds. Especially to that side, it's, it's already gone. That's the actual summit, by the way. Let's see if we can make the line and uh, make the line and just take a picture with the, with the, with the geodesic uh, Marker, you know. And here we are, we've made it to Mount Washington's summit, 6288 feet above sea level, 1.9 thousand meters. And here's the, the geodesic marker, you know, the survey marker. So here we are, bucket list. And this was the site of the strongest wind gust ever recorded on the surface of the earth. 231 miles per hour. It happened in 1934 and it cleared up again. So let's see the other views. Can you spot Minitini 3? Very cool, if a little unsettling, being so high up above the clouds. And apparently we've gotten very lucky. These clear conditions are extremely rare here up on Mount Washington. That's gotta be so cool, just soaring, empowered at the mercy of the winds.
So, well, last time here from above the clouds. Tomorrow we're coming back and it may be a totally different experience. So, uh, it's amazing, amazing yeah, weather today. Just until we get to, uh, yeah, doesn't get any better than this. We even saw a glider. Now for the more exciting part, the descent. We must downshift to first gear to avoid overusing the brakes. Oh, by the way, no guardrails. It is definitely a sight to behold, to be driving above the clouds. We're back on that dirt road section. Isn't this like the most spectacular drive ever? It is in my top five for sure. Let's go back. We wanted to have lunch in Gorham, but we're going to have something in the camper instead. And then, tomorrow, first thing in the morning, we're taking the Cog Railway. Look at him, descending from the top. Blue train. I think we were up there, all the way up there. They parked them down here for the night. Oh wow, look at that glow. But then it's too dark. 
in any case, we decided to make a frozen pizza here in the RV, boondocking, just using our convection microwave and our power system. It is consuming 1.7K watts, just the, the convection microwave. And it is gonna be on for a while, so it, it probably bring our battery down to about 75%, 80%. Let me check how, how it is right now. Okay, so we're down to 78% and it is almost done. The good thing is, tomorrow is gonna be sunny and uh, tomorrow we're going to full hookups. So we're gonna be totally fine uh, with this. Mm, yum! Let's eat! Good morning. There are our trains right there. It looks like they're refueling them. Oh, that's the steam locomotive right there. Look at that, how cool. Here they come with the coal. I have always been fascinated by steam engines. Such ancient technology by today's standards. But at the time, it was the breakthrough that propelled the Industrial Revolution. It is so cool that they are still using at least one of the steam engines. Go ahead, wake everybody up. There it is, coming alive, getting ready for the long climb up to Mount Washington. Is this normal? Flowers in fall? There's a museum at the terminal with all kinds of information about the railway and its history. Very interesting and fascinating to see. I love to see all these old stereographs. There it is, still warming up. And there's an outdoor exhibit as well. Now I want to see this. Here it goes. There it goes. Slowly gaining speed. Let me tell you, it's gotta take some power to push that car up the steep incline. I really wanted to go up on the steam engine, but we were actually a little late to book our tickets, so it was sold out. So our consolation prize will be a trip on the biodiesel engine. I'm sure it will still be enthralling, just not as cool. Yep, we're about to do it! Here's looking back towards the terminal and the Mount Washington Resort at Bretton Woods.
This area containing the highest peaks of the White Mountains is called the Presidential Range, because most of the highest mountains are named after US presidents. The highest, of course, being Mount Washington. The large observation deck. That's the top, consider the top floor. And that would be the Appalachian Trail. Car to the summit today. And we are once again at the summit of Mount Washington. It does seem a little cloudier today and certainly colder, but that's okay. I'm definitely open to having a different experience. The concessions are closed probably because it is Columbus Day and here's the weather station. And the museum seems to be open, so let's check it out. Have some samples of the local fauna. And here's the anemometer that clocked the record setting 231 mile per hour wind gust. Make the line so we can take a picture with the sign. Suddenly, it seems to be a much clearer day. We can even see the opulent Mount Washington Resort down there. And someone parked right next to us. I think we've been very lucky. Most people who come up here don't get to see anything, and we've been blessed with clear skies two days in a row. I do believe one of the cars coming up is our ride. And the steam locomotive is getting ready for departure. Here she goes. We're in the water. I guess there's no need for steam on the way down. Gravity takes care of things. It is impossible to get tired of these views. Here at the Dog Railway, I did not need that locomotive to get you guys down with these black wheels. We actually get you guys from the summit to base with these black wheels alone. Now, we're not going to do that today, but that is something we are capable of doing. All right, down we go.
As someone who has been almost obsessed with the Appalachian Trail over the years, it is very exciting to see a section that I'll probably never get to do. Still, it would be exciting to tackle some of these mountains, but one careful step at a time. In conclusion, the Auto Road and the Cog Railway, two totally different experiences. I'm really glad we got to do both, and also very different going up versus going down. On the way up, in order to see these views, you almost have to twist your neck like the girl in The Exorcist. Now they are right in front of us. I've always said it, the views are always better on the way down. We've made it all the way back down. Oh, check it out! I hadn't realized you could see the resort all the way from here. And very glad that the Cog Railway is a harvest host. It made things a lot easier. Taking one last look, I ponder when we will return. If we return, I can't think of a way to top this experience. We wanted to stop by the Mount Washington Resort, but not a good idea with the trailer in tow. Another time, perhaps. It is October 11th, Columbus Day. In this part, the end of the camping season. In fact, most campgrounds close down for the crude winter months, but we were able to find a couple scattered here and there across the state that will be open for a few more days. So our plans have changed a little bit and we may not be able to see as much as we had originally anticipated. We're going to turn onto US 3 South, which is another beautiful drive. Eventually, we also get on Interstate 93 for a little bit, passing by Franconia Notch State Park, the Cannon Mountain Aerial Tramway, a little bit of traffic here and, by the way, in all my travels, it is the first stretch of interstate I see that is a two-lane road. Technically, a Super 2 in this case. Or so I've been reliably informed by the Book of Knowledge, also known as the Wikipedia. Now coming upon Flume Gorge, another one of those must-dos in New Hampshire. Hmm, maybe tomorrow. This is Lincoln, New Hampshire. It seems very touristy, 
And here's where we're going to take the famous Cancamagos Highway. I've already checked and it is RV friendly. It'll just be very hard to find parking this time of the year. Busy, busy town. Here we are, going into the White Mountain National Forest. As I was saying, I would love to stop and see more of these places, but parking with the trailer in tow, while not impossible, it is limited, and we would have to park farther away. We're staying at a campground not far from here, so we can come back. Lots of trails. Lots of things to do here. Let me tell you, pretty congested. Lots of people leaf peeping in this area. Actually, a little too congested for my taste. This is Cancamagos Pass, elevation 2855. From here, we have nowhere to go but down. It is a beautiful drive, even if we didn't get to stop anywhere. And here we are, Chocora Camping Village, which is a KOA holiday. One of the few campgrounds still open in the great state of New Hampshire. Isn't this nice? This is our campsite here. Check it out. We are lakefront. Yeah, this is a very nice campsite. The campground is almost closed for the season. It is like a skeleton crew at this point. The store is only open a few hours a day and I don't think we can rent the kayaks anymore at this time of the year, but it is very nice. Very nice indeed. Is that an intake I see? In any case, we'll continue exploring tomorrow. Let's go for a ride! I've heard the area around the Lake Winnipesaukee is beautiful, so we're going to the Castle in the Clouds conservation area and we're gonna go for a hike, which comes highly recommended. And you know I love chasing waterfalls. All right, let's go for a little hike. It's a beautiful day in New Hampshire. That's Lake Winnipesaukee over there in the distance. And uh, such beautiful colors up here. And check out that tree by the lake. Picture perfect. That's gonna be so much fun. And uh, yeah, I'm really obsessed with that tree. It is beautiful here. Oh yeah, it is gorgeous out here. I think we're gonna do the Brook Trail, which is uh, this trail. It starts here and um, it just goes All the way down here and they have actually the brook walk is the one that i want to do the brook walk not this one but this one it has seven roaring waterfalls so roaring falls twin falls weeder falls the cascades emerald pond bridal vale and falls of song will be the last one and uh, it's this one i heard great things so let's do it Hello, little fella. Oh no. Yeah, 
I got nervous that the whole trail would be closed, but it was just that little branch back there. Let's see what this is. Number two is Twin Falls. Here we are, second waterfall. And this one is called Meteor Falls. Yeah, Whittier Falls and we lost cell phone signal, so we're just pretty, pretty much going to follow the blazes. <laughs> hmm, the Cascades. Through the Emerald Pool. Huh? This is was Emerald Pool Falls. Far, this has been the best. Let's continue. This is definitely the most beautiful of them all, Fall of Sand. Oh, let me tell you, this part here, up and up and up. But I don't mind, I can use the exercise. I brought water, should be okay. It's about another mile maybe. Okay, Shannon Pond, half a mile that way. Here we've got some ruins, apparently what used to be the Pine Lodge. Whew. 
Well, I believe that will conclude our hiking for today. That was very rewarding. Beautiful, beautiful area. And here we are, back at the pond. Yeah, remember that tree? Of course, the main thing to visit here is the Castle in the Clouds, a historic estate with commanding views of Lake Winnipesaukee, but we're not going today. I'm going to see if we can do Flume Gorge, otherwise we'll just do the Kankamagos Highway one more time, this time though stopping at some of the points of interest. That to the right would be Lake Winnipesaukee, not as easy to see from the main road. Let's stop here real quick. This is a short canal that connects Lake Squam with Lake Winnipesaukee. As I mentioned, I wanted to visit Flume Gorge, but apparently I had to buy the tickets in advance and judging by the parking lot it is going to be very crowded, so this we're going to have to save for our next visit. And I'm just gonna take the Kankamagos Highway back to the campground. It almost feels like déjà vu, but with a lot less people, it being a Tuesday after Columbus Day, and this is kind of the end of the season around here. Let's see what's going on here. Just people here admiring the pretty colors. It is very pretty. Okay, one final stop here at Rocky Gorge. It is such a beautiful area and I'm kind of bummed out we didn't get to see Flume Gorge, but at least we got to stop at some of the scenic pullouts we couldn't see yesterday. And we're back. 
let's go get something to eat and Jake's here has good reviews. And as it's been the theme in this area of New England, well, clam chowder, lobster roll, and Illy ordered something called a fishbowl margarita. This was an awesome campsite, but now we must continue. There it is, Lake Winnipesaukee. I wish we could find a place to stop and admire the view. Riding, riding, my RV. Someone recommended this restaurant here where it is Thanksgiving every day. And I'm talking about Hart's Turkey Farm. I should be able to park towards the back. Let's sit at the bar, get a local IPA, free pretzels and of course the classic roasted turkey dinner. Yum! Well that was like Thanksgiving in October, very nice actually. We definitely have to return to this area one of these days. And maybe we'll find a friend with a boat so we can cruise Lake Winnipesaukee, huh? Actually, we almost had to, but we found what probably is the last campground still open in this area of New Hampshire. Riding, riding. Well, we're gonna go for a little hike. Not so little, actually. And uh, it's about an hour drive from here, so... Enjoy. Enjoy the ride. So, today we're hiking to the summit of Mount Monadnock, which, by the way, I had to get a reservation online. It is the most prominent mountain peak in southern New Hampshire and one of the most frequently climbed mountains in the world, probably because of its relative proximity to highly populated areas like Boston, for example, which is less than two hours away. And here we are. Right, let's do this. We're going to go up on the White Dot Trail and then we'll take the White Cross on the way down. White Dot is a little shorter but steeper. This first part is the same and fairly easy with a gentle, steady climb. Oh no, I spoke too soon. It's getting a little rocky now. Whew, this mountain is kicking my butt today. Maybe because I'm still sore from from yesterday. Was it two days ago? In any case, White Cross Trail, White Dot. 
So we're gonna go up the white dot. We're gonna go up the white dot and come back on the white cross. strenuous now that we got up these stairs. I just looked at the old trails map and this seems to be the steepest part. Well, I was wrong. This is steeper. I kid you not, this is very steep. And as we turn around, there's already a little bit of a view. I think we are reaching the tree line up there, maybe. So the views are gonna be like, probably pretty spectacular. I, on the other hand, I'm starting to run out of steam here. We'll see. How to make it to the top, right? All the way up there now. It's not good. <laughs> uh, this is the point where I tell you to look back. Look at that. That's amazing. Now it is totally worth it, right? That makes it totally worth it. We're still about halfway up, by the way. So they were not kidding about it being about two hours. Well, it, at least this part is a little flatter, so we do get to take a break. But I have a feeling we're gonna start going back up real soon here. Let's study the local flora. And I have an app for that. that. Oh, juniper. Yeah, we've got slow internet. What can I tell you? Oh no. Yeah, this this may be the hardest part right here. <laughs> look at that view. Well, they said it gets a little a little harder after this, so hopefully we can make it all the way up. There. Yeah. A little scrambling here and there, but the views back there, totally worth it. Look what's coming next. But nothing has ever been written about cowards. So we're gonna go all the way up. Look at that. It keeps getting better and better all the time. And more strenuous too. Busy trail. Check out that view, huh? Let's take in the panoramic view from here.
I'm guessing that would be the top, right? Just gonna go out on a limb and say that would be us in about 20 minutes. Seems a little sketchy. So yeah, that's that's what they say. Take the the white dot up and the white cross down because sometimes it is harder to go down when it is really steep like that. Let me check my app, but we should be very close to the top. Yeah, we're right here. I guess we have to go downhill a little bit here before our final ascent. Is that it? All right. We've got our survey marker. We have reached the summit. And it is very windy up here. of a sudden, dead calm, and it is breathtaking. Well, what goes up must go down, so down we go. It is usually scarier on the way down, but you have the expansive views right in front of you. Sometimes you just have to take a break for the views. Here's where we take the easier, slightly longer white cross trail. Oh, I just can't get enough of these views. Final stretch. Whew. I'm tired, but we're almost there. We're almost there. Look how beautiful. Mission accomplished. Let's go back to the campground. We're going to visit our local tavern for dinner and uh, after that hike, I can definitely have all the calories I want. Mm, specialty tater tots. It's a Sedona steak pizza.
it is our last day in this area of New Hampshire, so we're going to stop by Concord, the state capital city, and Manchester, the most populous city in northern New England. Here we are, New Hampshire's capital, Concord. Let's try and find parking. We were supposed to get a private tour of the Capitol building, same as we did in Des Moines, but the scheduling didn't quite work out and now it doesn't look like it is going to happen. But still, let's check out the city, even though we may not do much here. Here we go, we'll park here. Here we are. The original Golden Eagle at the top was made out of wood and replaced in 1957 with this more element-proof version. Built in between 1816 and 1819. That's a long time ago. And here, we have uh, what seems to be a replica of the Liberty Bell. Let's check it out. This is the oldest state capital in which both houses of the legislature still meet in their original chambers. Well, there it is, the New Hampshire State House here in Concord. I would have liked to go inside, but then again, uh, we we just gonna see the outside for today. Same, same we did in Vermont, and continue uh, towards Manchester. We might see a couple of things here in, in the state, but in the state capital, and in Manchester, which is the largest city. And they have this arch here in front of the, the capital grounds. City of Concord, New Hampshire. The arch is a monument to the soldiers and sailors of the state of New Hampshire. Let's go by the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center and check it out. Actually, this is what I want to see, a Mercury Redstone rocket. This is actually a replica of the rocket that took New Hampshire native Alan Shepard into space back in 1961. That little black cone at the top, that's the capsule. Pretty scary, not to mention claustrophobic. The Discovery Center here was also named after New Hampshire's other famous astronaut, Krista McAuliffe, who died in the Challenger disaster. Next up, Manchester, New Hampshire's most populous city. We've heard about this place called Murphy's. They have 120 beers on tap and the food is supposed to be decent, so we figured we'd check it out and maybe have lunch. So here we are. We came to the famous Murphy's in Manchester. The beer selection is legit, but there is no one here. So I think we're gonna go someplace else, somewhere near the campground. Govstown here, pretty busy little town, and we're just four and a half miles from the campground. And there is this restaurant called Putnam's Waterview Restaurant that seems pretty good. Chowder. Good. Yeah, they use different crackers. Mmm, chicken Oscar. All right, well, that was really good. Now, the name Waterview, it's a little misleading because there's no real water view except from the parking lot. But the food's good, and everybody seems to be a local, which is always a good thing. Yeah, you see? The water view is only from the parking lot. Maybe if you get one of these uh, 
Davis right there. Yeah, this is the view. It is actually beautiful. And that's it for this area of New Hampshire. Tomorrow we're moving to the seacoast and uh, what's up with this rain? Today we're actually staying in Massachusetts at Salisbury Beach Reservation, only place we could find. Wow, what's going on here? This is Goffstown, where we had dinner yesterday. Had we known this was going on, we would have timed it better so we could participate in the festivities. Let me tell you, sometimes serendipity works. Sometimes it doesn't. The Massachusetts state line should be right around here, but I don't see a sign anywhere. Welcome to Massachusetts. Oh, there we go. We will be at our destination soon. And uh, come to think of it, besides Boston, we haven't really done anything in the Bay State. Ooh, these condos here to the left have beach written all over them, so we must be close. Nice campground, not very busy this time of the year. We're here for only one night, so let's go explore the seacoast. Well, explore might be too big a word. We're going to drive along it and see what it is like. This, by the way, is the mouth of the Merrimack River. That would be Plum Island and the Plum Island Lighthouse, which kind of looks tiny from this vantage point. And that's the Atlantic, the open ocean, the coast of Portugal some 3,000 miles over the horizon. Let's go for a ride along the 15 or so miles that comprise the New Hampshire sea coast. First, we have to drive through Salisbury, Massachusetts, which seems like your typical coastal beach town. Basically, one road, with houses and vacation rentals on both sides. All these on the right-hand side, oceanfront property. Coming up here on the right, and if you blink you might miss it, is the New Hampshire state line. And it is right here on this street, barely a quarter mile to the west, that we're going to have our great New England meetup. Actually, in a couple of hours. Let's get off the main road and see some of the oceanfront properties. This, by the way, Seabrook, New Hampshire. I think this is the only glimpse of the Atlantic we're gonna get from here. Let me tell you. I wish there was some place to park, but it is all private property. Very pretty, good looking houses, maybe someday we'll be able to rent something around here. Ok, here we go, let's park right here and take a break. Very nice anchorage here with all these good looking boats, actually. 
rather vintage looking boats. And that would be the Seabrook nuclear power plant. All right, let's continue. We're gonna go over this bridge spanning the Hampton Harbor Inlet onto the town of, you guessed right, Hampton. The good-looking campground on the right-hand side is none other than Hampton Beach State Park. We tried that one, but there was no vacancy. All right, this is pretty lively. I wasn't expecting it to be this way this late in the season. And unfortunately, we didn't allocate enough time for the seacoast. As I mentioned, we only have one night at the campground, so tomorrow we begin our journey south. This is just an overview, but I've seen enough that I know I want to return. And you may ask once again, what's the hurry? Well, we have to be back in Miami in exactly two weeks. And I want to explore some of the Atlantic coast on the way there. can imagine this on a warm, sunny, summer day, full of sunbathers. I really like this part here with the seawall. Are those the Isles of Shoals I see in the distance? They sure are. There must be pretty good surfing around here. We are now in Northampton State Beach. This is what I'm talking about. Take a look at all these mansions. That's probably very old money right there. This is called Fox Hill Point. And we are now in Rye Harbor. Let me tell you, I'm liking the New Hampshire sea coast more and more, even on this gray, somewhat gloomy day. Let's park once again, really quick. Ooh, that water's gotta be cold. Is it me, or is it starting to look like Maine a little bit? And those must be the Isles of Shoals once again. Yep, this rocky coastline definitely reminiscent of Maine. I mean, we're just a couple of miles away from the state line at this point. All right, let's swing by Portsmouth and then we go to our meetup. By the way, there are so many state parks along this short coastline. I mean, many more than I expected.
Here we go, public parking, but it is full. It is very lively. This, by the way, is US-1. And we're going to drive on the Memorial Bridge spanning the Piscataqua River into Maine. Just because. By the way, where's my Welcome to Maine sign? It looks like they forgot again. But at least we've got a lobster to greet us. Okay, back to New Hampshire we go. We did stop for some tax-free wine and liquor, and then, after a mediocre lobster roll, we met up with a bunch of awesome people at Brown's Lobster Pound. Good morning. Pretty chilly morning here in New England. Especially since all we have is this hoodie. Uh, but... Uh, Today is probably going to be our last full day in, in the New England states. We're going down to Connecticut. And then heading south, hugging the coast. I thought we were going to have a beautiful sunrise, but we still have the remnants of last night's storm. It wasn't a storm, but it rained quite a bit. I was going to stay here for a few minutes, see if we get a nice sunrise. There's a faint hint of a sunrise right there. We decided to come to the actual beach by the ocean, but still, no sunrise. Today we begin a new phase in our... Merge onto State Reservation Road. Never fails. Today we begin a new phase in our uh, fall 2021 trip here. And as you know, you know, there's no wrong way to RV and a lot of people like to stay at places for weeks and months at a time, sometimes the whole season. But we are kind of restless. I, I get that itch to hitch from time to time. And as much as we've enjoyed uh, New England, especially New Hampshire and Vermont, uh, it's time to move, to move to a different part of the country, namely back south. I hope you have enjoyed our New Hampshire adventure. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be And guys I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding I'm riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be And guys I'm free In my RV yeah.